so the foundation of Green River Ordinance is based around guys that got together when they were 13 or 14 years old, or either one of you, one of those guys? No, nope, unfortunately not. We're uh, we're some of the the later guys. I joined when I was 15. Yeah. The so two brothers in the band that aren't here right now, Jamie and Jeff Ice. Jeff was 13 and Jamie was 15. Or right. Jamie was 14. Yeah. So it's not like the Oak Ridge Boys where they just kept changing people. No, no, right they're, they're, they're still part of the band. They just aren't with us today. Right. They're coming in actually tomorrow morning. Well, how has things changed since you were 15, Josh? Uh, you have to pay for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can drink now, right? You can drink, which is a plus. Your parents don't pay for everything, which is a plus and a negative, I guess. Uh, but we started out, yeah, in, in Fort Worth, Texas. And I remember in high school, like, none of us were very good at sports. And so, uh, our parents, uh, Jamie's parents, actually were um, they were deadheads, so they they kind of always loved music. And Jamie and Jeff couldn't throw a football for the life of them, um, so their parents bought them musical equipment. That's how yeah, they're going to be cool. So they had like this really long hair, and they were like playing blues rock in their garage. And then when I was fifteen, I grew up singing kind of Merle Haggard and country and western. And I met these guys, and they were like these cool rock and rollers. And I was like, I want to be in a band. So. We all kind of joined forces and started Green River Ordinance and then met Denton in college and dropped out of college and played ever since. You don't look like a Merle Haggard kind of guy, though. There's videos of me in, in, uh, in uh, Wranglers. My parents and my dad, that was the only introduction to music I ever had was like country and western, like Gene Watson, Merle Haggard stuff. Oh, and yeah, Gene Watson. I used to sing a song called Farewell Party, which is yeah. a really sad song about dying and you're like 14. It's a classic song. It's a classic song. When you're 14, you're not so sure about it. <laughs> um, and so I grew up with my dad. We play these things in Texas called Opry's, which are these hole in the walls, and they have a house band, and you learn country songs. And so we would sing George Jones and Gene Watson and all these different kind of songs, and that was my introduction to music. And they dressed me up in terrible country get up with like tight Wranglers boots, uh, blow dried chili bowl haircut with like a Western shirt, and that was my introduction to music. Were your jeans uh, creased? Starched. Oh, yeah, you got to starch that thing. Yeah, get those things on just with butter. I want to get lost in a simple song Sing it all night long Baby, dance with me Won't take that ride to the other side We'll spread our wings And we'll reach new heights We're flying, we're flying high Darling, you look beautiful Just flying, your hand in mine won't you come with me tonight? How did you come into we the just picture then? Picked didn't? him up off the side yeah, of the road. Was, yeah, was, he's p- was banging on. To, he's banging on a jug yeah. somewhere. <laughs> no, uh, so I went to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, and so did Jeff and Jamie, and uh, I was doing music at TCU and. Um, it's funny because I had seen the band Green River Ordinance like play around campus before. It's like, oh, that's cool, you know, it's cool. And then um, just one day, I randomly got an email from this guy named Jamie asking if I could uh, play drums in his band. And I was like, sure, you know, I'll I'll come and see what's up. You know, I've got some extra time at night. We're bit by the bug at an early age. And then we went when we were in college. We went to college for a little bit of time, and then we convinced our parents that. We wanted to drop out, and we're going to really pursue this thing. We're going to buy the 15-passenger. We're going to buy a trailer. We're going to try this out. We got to open up for Bon Jovi. won a contest in Dallas and got to play with Bon Jovi in front of 20,000 people. On their Have a Nice Day tour, they did this thing where each market they went to, they had a local band open up. So we're sophomores in college. And we go play at American Airlines, and we're like, we can never go back to school. Yeah. Are you kidding? Like, You're mom ruined. and dad, like, we were ruined. We go down, maybe we'll do that bound. You always love that sound. Darling, dance with me, no turning back. Honey, it's a fact. Yeah, you and me, all right where we need to be.
played some shows with a band called Collective Soul, and oh, yeah. we grew up listening and loving Collective Soul. And seeing Ed, yeah. he's become a buddy of ours. See him work, I'm like, you know, it's like Josh, you need to do that. And I'm yeah. like, I can't do that. <laughs> he's got like this. He's like throwing them. Like, <laughs> but you just get to like take notes and be. How do you command an audience? And how do you, you know? How do you, uh, how do you possess yourself in a way that is uh, that is compelling for people? Yeah, he's great. Uh, oh yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. And they've stood the test of time and songwriting wise. It's just one of those bands. I think you uh, getting to see them and their breath, the you know, brevity of that band has been inspiring. Mm -hmm. So I've been listening mainly to Chasing Down the Wind. It's, and that's you, you did that record last year. Yeah. 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 And did you uh, catch it? Pardon? Did you catch the wind? <laughs> I've been still chasing. Good it. man. It's, it's a quick one, man. There's some winds you want to keep behind. Right, you. Right, yes, sir. Right, yeah. Amen True. to that. Yeah. True. Well played. Uh, so now my understanding right that you that you did that record or wrote that record on the banks of the Caney Fork River is yeah. that right? Yeah, so Jeff the the bass player he is um his wife's parents live out there in um McMinnville. Yeah. on rock in Rock Island right there on the Caney Fork River. Right. They have a freaking awesome cabin, <laughs> and just it's beautiful out there. It's a just about paradise. an about an hour southeast of Nashville for those who are watching this right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's heaven on earth. Yeah, and so we uh, decided to go out there for a week and just uh, Debbie and Tim or or Jeff's in laws, and they just are, are the sweetest people alive, and allow us five guys to come and crash their house, and uh, they feed us amazing food debbie is just an incredible cook and so it's just like we went down there for a week and all day we wake up debbie would cook us some sort of spectacular breakfast casserole <laughs> we would eat too much of that and then just go get our guitars and stuff go down to the dock and sit on the dock for a couple hours as the sun's coming up just toss around some ideas and then we'd hop in the water Take out a jet ski or two and come back, write some more. And so I'm guessing the next three, four, five yeah. records are going yeah, to be written on the Caney it. Fort. We're planning that. <laughs> Guys are doomed to success. <laughs> you keep that stuff up, then you'll you'll be working until you're really old. And I mean, and that's we've loved. I think that there's something to be said about breaking the barrier between the artist and the musician. I mean, the artist and the fan. And so there's something to be said. I feel like the lifelong fans we've had to learn through our rise and fall as a band. I think going through it, being with a label, not being with a label. That really the the glue that holds this whole thing together. One is us as individuals and our passion for the music and telling our story, but also the fans that recommit uh, their hard-earned time and money to mm -hmm. our music. And so I think artists, that we've seen people not get that, and there's been at times in our, we've lost track of that. So for us, it's just whether we're playing for a 1,000 or 300 people, we want people to feel like that this experience is, is a one that's communal, like Denton said, like getting people together in an environment that makes them feel a part of something and not like spectators in something. Right. So, and the good thing is, is like we know a lot of our fans by first name basis and know their kids and they're, you know, so it's like there's something special when you reach that kind of level with certain people and they come back to shows and you eat dinner with. So it's like, it's just one of those things that's kind of a priceless experience. Yeah. GreenRiverOrdinance.com. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for coming in. Josh and Denton. Yeah, that's right. Thank Thanks you very much. much Thanks man. for having us.